welcome to the Hashimoto's Doctor Podcast. You're now part of a growing community of people determined to take their health back through education and self-empowerment. But because of the healthcare system today, we don't have access to the types of healthcare that we want. So we have to do things differently. We've got to do things smarter, and we do that by becoming our own advocates. This podcast will give you the perspective and thoughts of one of the world's leading Hashimoto's doctors. So let's get started. Hey guys, Dr. Shook here. I hope you're doing well today. In today's podcast, what I want to talk to you guys about is a very, very important subject. And this is really about the bad estrogens. We're going to call them bad estrogens. They're not necessarily bad estrogens, but the fact is is that there are some there are dangers to your estrogen byproducts. Your your body when your body makes your sex hormones, your testosterone, your estrogen, it breaks them down for elimination because remember with hormones there are there are four key things that we have to look at we have to look at production we have to look at uh, we have to look at transportation we have to look at sensitivity of your body to the hormones we have to look at detoxification this this falls under the detoxification of hormones this is really important to understand because whenever your your body wants to eliminate hormones and it does it utilizes the hormone then it breaks it down it's called biotransform biotransformation biotransforming the hormone for elimination it takes the hormone that is fat soluble and makes it water soluble so that it can be eliminated through your urine your sweat or your feces okay so your body has to break it down and eliminate it now estrogens in particular get metabolized into a few different forms. And the ones that we look at are called hydroxylated forms. Okay? So it's so we, you know, your your primary estrogens are going to be estrone is the primary estrogen, then estradiol and then estriol, okay? Now, estrone is the is the primary estrogen. And these these estrogens they they break down and they're eliminated by the body and they get hydroxylated. Now when they get hydroxylated, we, there are three different forms of this. We call it 16, so the number 16 hydroxy estrogen. And then it's 4 hydroxy estrogen and 2 hydroxy estrogen. The, the important thing to know here is that you're, you're going to have all of these in your body. It's normal to have these in your body, but it's the amount of each, of each type that is, that is important. Now, these are uh, these are metabolized estrogens, but they can still have a weak effect uh, on and stimulatory effect on your um, on the the cells of your body. So you you can still have a response to them, but it's it's considered weak, and it, it can also take up a spot for your for your normal estrogen for your estrone, for example. It can it can take up a spot on one of the little docking stations on the cell. So every cell in your body has these little things called receptors. If we think of it as like a little lock and key, the, the hormone like your estrogen, your estrone for example, your primary estrogen would come up to the cell, fit in like a key to the to the receptor on the cell and stimulate changes in the cell's function, okay? Now these hydroxylated forms, they may be able to partially fit into one of those estrogen receptors and block the estrone or estradiol or estriol from having its effect on the cell. So this is important because it doesn't stimulate the physiology the same way for one thing. So it could actually block and create some problems with your uh, response to estrogens. Now the other thing is is that you know these metabolites they they have to be measured you know uh, post hepatically. So after they've gone through the liver. So we typically we measure them urinary. Uh, in, a, in a urinary form, they're not they're not uh, available to be measured in the blood. They're uh, we measure them uh, through through a urinary test, and we can look at the 16 hydroxy, 4 hydroxy, and 2 hydroxy estrogen metabolites. Now the problem with these and the real issue here comes down to the fact that the 16 hydroxy estrogen, it's it's associated with when we have higher levels of it than we should. It has been associated with cyst formation and tissue proliferative problems. So when we see someone that has a lot of cysts throughout their body, I'm thinking we may have an issue here with with higher estrogen metabolites like 16-hydroxy. You know, I I see it a lot with 
you know, cysts everywhere, cysts in the breast, uh, uterine cysts, uh, cysts throughout the body. That's, that's something that's on my mind. Do we have a problem? If someone tells me that, you know, they've had uh, a history, they have a history of endometriosis, and this is not, this is not uh, clearly understood, but we believe that it does have an impact, your 16-hydroxy may have a role there. So this, these, these metabolites, if they're too high, they can promote you know, cyst formation is what we believe in tissue proliferation or tissue growth, which are, you know, you know, as it sounds, that's, it's not a good thing, right? It's something that we want to have. Everything needs to be in balance. So we want to know if this is occurring. Now, the 4-hydroxy estrogen is actually the one that we think uh, of as the most dangerous. Because the 4-hydroxy estrogen, we know it can create damage to our DNA. And that's not a good thing because that can cause mutation and we, we know that that is a risk factor for cancer. So we obviously want to know if your 4-hydroxy estrogens are at normal levels or not. And then the 2-hydroxy is actually the preferred form. That is the form that, that, is, that we want to see the majority of these estrogen metabolites in that form. We, you're going to have a small, you should have a small percentage that are, that are your 4-hydroxy and a small percentage that are your 16-hydroxy, but you know, those are all things that, you know, what, it's interesting. When you see someone that's using an estrogen replacement, so they're, they're using a hormone, these are all things that I highly recommend you, you check and that you observe because for one thing, they can be having estrogenic-like effects on, on the body but not be observable in your blood test. And so let's say you're, you're checking your estrogen. Well, you're going to look at the estrogen levels and they might be perfectly fine and you, and, and you might um, say, well, you know what? I, I don't feel like, uh, like I have enough or I'm having a lot of symptoms of an estrogen deficiency. And you might be tempted to take more. But could it be, could it be that you're actually dealing with, uh, with high estrogen metabolites that are taking up space on the cells, right? They fit into the little lock and key receptor, blocking your estrogens from actually attaching themselves to the cell and stimulating it. So it may be that you have higher estrogen metabolites, um, and that this is a this is a big big problem because you don't see that in the blood. You see that in the urine. You have to check for these specifically in the urine, and you want to take these things into consideration. You want to look at the the estrogen levels. You want to look at the uh, metabolite levels, and you want to look at the metabolite levels because they're risk factors for one thing. I mean, they're they're definitely risk factors for uh, for bigger problems, for tissue growth, cyst formation, cancers, and all kinds of things that we definitely want to avoid. So, uh, whenever I'm you know I'm I'm looking at, at someone's hormones, I'm thinking about this. Whenever I see hormonal imbalances, I'm thinking about this. Is this occurring? Are there are there high levels of these metabolites? Are they in the appropriate ratios? If someone's using a hormone replacement therapy, is this occurring? And that could be testosterone, that could be estrogen. All these things can feed into this pathway. So you want to look at this and you want to know what's going on here because there are nutritional strategies that you can utilize to, to try and help shift your metabolism more to the to the preferred 2-hydroxy form, right? That's the form that's that's going to be preferred, and, uh, and, and likely that will help you to reduce your risk of some of these bigger, bigger problems uh, that could occur. So it's something I want to share with you guys. I hope this helps you to better understand estrogens and some of these more dangerous types and forms so that you can be better empowered. Guys, if you need help, if you're struggling to figure out what's going on with your thyroid, your hormones, you, know, you may be a candidate to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I work with up two to four people per month. Uh, to try and help them identify what's going on with their hormones, with their thyroid, with their immune system. I work a lot with autoimmunity and I really try to help them put together plans that are unique and specific to their needs that are, that are based on diet and nutritional support to help them get their health back. If you have any questions or you need anything, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, please do let us know. Uh, if you've enjoyed the podcast, share it with other people. Uh, if you, if you uh, feel so inclined, we're trying to get the word out about these natural approaches that we need to take, we've got to consider to really help us improve our health. So I appreciate you guys. I enjoy uh, hanging out with you. Please let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you. Please let us know if there's any way that we can improve. We're always trying to do a better job. And if you've enjoyed the podcast, please do again share it, review it on iTunes for us if you don't mind, and uh, just um, you know help us help us spread the word. But I appreciate you guys so much. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I can't wait uh, to talk to you guys again soon. Thanks. 
Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed hanging out behind the scenes with Dr. Shook. You can also talk with and learn from Dr. Shook through Facebook Live on our Facebook page at the office of Dr. Brad Shook. Don't forget, you can also get access to our videos, guidebooks, and thyroid programs at www.drbradshook.com. Oh yeah, and don't forget one more thing. We can change the world one person, one family, and one community at a time. Until next time, remember, today is your day, and no one will tell you who you are and what you can be.